Good morning. Good morning. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all and his compassion is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever.
Amen. Good morning. We welcome you to our service this morning, those who are here in the sanctuary and those who are viewing us on our social media sites. We are thankful for your presence. Our first scripture this morning comes to us from the book of Deuteronomy. The book of Deuteronomy, the 34th chapter, the first through the eighth verse. Book of Deuteronomy, the 34th chapter, reading the first through the eighth verse. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo to the top of Pisgah, which is the opposite Jericho, and the Lord showed him the whole land. Gilead as far as Dan, Nephitali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the Negev and the plain, that is, the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zoar, the Lord said to him, This is the land which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants, I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. He was buried in the valley in the land of Moab, opposite Ephkor, but no one knows where his burial place is to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was unimpaired, and his vigor had not abated. The Israelites wept for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days. Then the period of mourning for Moses was ended. Our second, script, our second reading comes to us from the Gospel recorded in St. John. St. John, the 11th chapter, beginning with the 30th, concluding with the 36th verse. Gospel recorded by St. John, the 11th chapter, beginning with the 30th, concluding with the 36th verse. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Mount Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. And thus ends the reading of the Gospel reported by St. John, the 11th chapter, reading the 30th through the 36th verse. Hearts and minds as we pray. 
ready to go before the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, your blessed Son, your most worthy gift to us, we thank you, God, first and foremost for him. Lord, we thank you for this day, those that have seen it, I thank you for them. There are plenty that did not wake up this morning. Thank you for getting us up, waking us up, preparing us to prepare for your worship service today, God. We thank you, Lord, for all of those that are here present in the building and those that are watching and listening to other media. We thank you, God, for even the things that we do not understand. There is so much going on in this world, but we know that you have promised to come back and get us. So we are not worried about that. It's just in the meantime, God, we need some more grace, some more of your mercy, some more of your love, some more of your joy. Joy is so easily stolen these days. But I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Do not let anyone steal your joy. God promised that he would give us joy. Even in the dark times, the shadows of death, we still, still have to remain joyful. Because God is in control. So we thank you, God, for the caretakers, God. We thank you for those that we've had to watch to go through a life changing time in their lives. We just ask that you would give them the strength to continue to care for their loved ones. God, I ask that you go by the hospitals and continue to touch the doctors, touch the nurses, touch the staff, everyone involved in the care of your children. We ask that you have your work right now. In your will. In your will. And only in your will. We ask that these things done. I ask that you be with my mouth. Continue to watch over us, continue to whew, minister to us as we then minister to others. So we thank you for our pastor, we thank you for his leadership, we thank you for his family. We thank you for his ear. And he can hear you that he purposely listens for your answers. That is a hard thing to do. Our flesh tells us one thing, but God, you know, if it's not your will, let it fall away from us. And all of these things, Lord, I feel, God, please, Lord, cover those that are right now, God. Yes. Those that are going through horrible tests of your will and your patience and our patience and everything. So we just thank you for still being with us as we grieve. As we grieve so many. We thank you for the Lawrence family and the Flagler family. your mercy, your peace, your hope, and your joy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
all of you here this morning. We thank those who continue to register each week for worship. We are so appreciative of your diligence. We continue to encourage everyone to be vaccinated and boosted. And if you have, excuse me, if you need, can't in take no, it's N95 masks. If you need N95 masks, I do have some. I'd be more than happy to share those with you. I hope that everyone has seen the arrangements for Mr. Lawrence. We will have a viewing here Thursday, 4 to 7, Thursday from 4 to 7 here at the church. Friday, the services will be at Peace Baptist Church or 155. That they're viewing that 11 services that noon. We are in need of ushers particularly for Friday. We will need a couple of persons here Thursday, but we really are in need of ushers for Friday. So persons, male and female, persons who, well first our own ushers, but then in addition persons who would volunteer to serve as ushers, would you contact Mrs. Evans, right? Persons who would volunteer as ushers, would you contact Mrs. Evans? The, the men are singing. You've already met with Clarice, but the men, men are going to sing Friday. So we want to be there, well, Thursday and Friday. You know, we just want to keep the family in prayer, but I, I have more to say in a moment. But the Charles Newby is, was taken to regional last evening. Now, Gwen says it's not much, but they're running some tests, and when I leave here, I'm going there, and I'll be able to say more later, but we want to keep them in our prayers. Sister Leora, was it you who told me that Elder Turner? No, he did. He said it was Paul. All right. <laughs> why I know when I've been trying to find out all week, yeah. no one has said anything. All right. I think so. they got the lines mixed up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad of that. <laughs> All right, I, I can't take much more anyway. <laughs> Let me thank everyone. Let me thank everyone for what a wonderful celebration we had last week. And we now, Mary was in charge, but I just want to give and something not here. Tell them I said this. I want to give a special shout out to our girls. They were here, they were dressed, they set up outside, they ran back and forth down between downstairs and outside, making the plates, setting up the plates, handing them out, and it was hot. Yes. And when I came outside, they were sweaty, but they were still working. So I just want to give a shout out to our girls and to thank Ooh. them. <laughs> Missionary mass meeting was supposed to be Saturday, but that has been postponed and until August, and we'll announce the new date later in August. VBS. Amen. VBS time. VBS is next week, Monday through Friday, the 11th through the 14th. We want to see everyone here for VBS. Now, last year we tried to have an arrangement where some are outside, some are inside, and it was still hot. So everyone's going to be here in the building this year, all right? Yes. All right. We want to see everyone here for BBS. Friday night will be a special youth celebration, um, and we'll say more about that next week. 
Saturday. Saturday here at the church. Mary, what time? Two o'clock. Saturday here at two o'clock. We will have a celebration for our graduates. Uh, how many do we have this year? We have three. Three graduates this year. So wow. we will have a celebration for our graduates here at the church Saturday the 15th at two o'clock. However, <laughs> that's district conference and Sunday school convention. <laughs> All right, so when, when Mary and I talked, we were looking at the calendar, we couldn't figure out how to arrange it other than to have the two at the same time. So some of us will be at Mitchell Chapel, but the rest of us, I want us to be here to celebrate the graduates. But what I have asked Mary to do is to have the celebration here as she normally would on Saturday, and then have the graduates to come Sunday so that I can help celebrate them, all right? Okay, I am to be at district conference. I can't be, she's, she be well, you can't be too late at the same time. <laughs> all right, so we're going, well, I want us to be here Saturday for our celebration, but the graduates will come Sunday, and I'll have an opportunity to celebrate with them. Time for BBS. We normally well, do that'll be announced next week. Oh. We're going to have dinner from 5:30 to 6:30. Right. We're going to have devotional and open from 6:30 to 6:45. Class will run from 6:45 to 7:45, and they will not close out. They just leave from the no, they have to class. All right, all right. Um, if you didn't hear all that, James is going to post all of that later this evening. So check our Facebook page. Yes. All right. Trusty day. Trusty day. Yes. Trusty day is for Sunday. Yeah. We have to honor Mr. Lawrence. Yes, we do. We cannot fall short this year. Everyone is. Well, this isn't anything new. You know, as long as I've been here, we've asked $300 from every member for trustee day. So we want to fulfill that this year. The captains are on our Facebook page. You can, if you do not know who your captain is, that's fine. Any trustee will be able to help you. You can see any of the trustees or you can see me, I'm a trustee too, as a matter of fact. You know, so you can see any of our trustees if you don't know who your captain is, but we have to honor Mr. Lawrence this year. Missionaries have an outreach program for this year with the Families Moving Forward Crisis Rescue Center. I guess an update on Mr. Charles. Oh. Broke my train of thought. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Families moving for a crisis rescue center. We are asking for toiletries, clothing items, um, other items that I'm missing. Uh, cleaning. Cleaning supplies. Yes. All right. Toiletries, clothing, cleaning socks. supplies. Um, Reverend behind me is saying socks, but that's clothing. <laughs> Yes. Um, and just whatever it is that we can give to help them. Um, I believe that's on our Facebook page too. But we want to um, donate as much as we can for the month. Um, you can bring this, the donations here. There's a table downstairs that already has a lot of stuff on it. Um, but we want to help support them for their, their project. Um, okay, what's the update? Um, Ms. Gwynn just texted me to let you know that Charles is scheduled to have surgery tomorrow. All right. All right. Um, he's going to have surgery tomorrow. We want to keep him in our prayers. But as I said, I will go over there and I'll be here. Um, I'm looking at a lovely bag on the first pew. Someone was kind enough to bring canvas, non perishable items for our box. I, Continue to encourage us to do so every week when we come to service. If you cannot bring them on Sundays, you can drop them off here during the week. 
Um, actually, when you come Thursday, bring some candidates with you, all right? We, we will need to keep our box full. I remind us that our box is used every day. Prayer requests go to our prayer email address, um, and we ask our prayer requests would be in by 5 o'clock on Tuesday, so they can be announced at our prayer service on Tuesday night at 7. Renee? Um, Just a minute. All right, come on up front. All right, you have your phones. Go to your GiveLify app. Those who are in the sanctuary, if you need an envelope, if you raise your hand, we will see that you receive one. On your GiveLify app, you can pay your tithes, your offering. You, you can give a little extra to the Ministry of Kindness. We need to continue to support those who are in need. Everything can be given through the GiveLify app. We thank those who have come by the church this week and dropped your offering off and those who have mailed them in. You can either drop your offering off or mail it in. You can call Brother Charles Richardson or Sister Mary Allen. She, they will be more than happy to come by and pick it up. But we thank each of you for your continued support of the Bonaparte Church. Amen. Amen. Now before the selection, good night. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I just want to let you know what you already know, and that's confirmation of how good God is. Yesterday I had just left the church and I was on my way to the grocery store on Hope Valley Road. And if you know anything about Hope Valley Road, it's a one lane each way, curvy road, and there's no passing nowhere on the road. So as I'm on my way to the grocery store, I notice there's a line of cars because the first cars wait to make a left, but they're waiting for me to come by first. Well, a young lady decided at the very back of that line to pass all of those cars and she was coming straight at me, nowhere to go. And she had hit the gas so she could pass, so she was going pretty good speed. But when they say God will open and give you a way of escape, mm -hmm. all of a sudden she went left. I went left narrow enough to get through without hitting the line of cars on my left, but she went in the ditch. And it was a good ditch because her car, by the time I went down and turned around, her car was sitting where she was going to have to get it towed. She had to climb out of the passenger side to get out. So my car is not hurt, mainly neither one of us was hurt. I checked on her, I mean, she had a little attitude, but <laughs> I just asked, I mean, I asked God to forgive me. The first thing I should have asked was, was she okay? But because I was so shaken up, the first thing I asked is, why did you do that? And she said, well, I didn't hit you, so I don't have to talk to you. So I got right back in my car and left. I saw a car in the ditch too. <laughs> so, but I'm just here to say that it could have went another way. Yes. Oh, yeah. Neither one of us might not be here, but both of us, she's okay, as far as I know. I saw her walking around, and um, but I just wanted to let you know that I'm just thankful to be here this morning mm -hmm. because it could have been something totally different out there. That's, I just want to thank the Lord and thank you all. Wow. We continue to pray for each other. Yes. Oh, uh -huh. 
the mask, the tests continue to play softly. I'm going to sit correctly. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Trying to figure all that out, 
And then by the time I figured all of that out, we went into this season of deaths. <clears throat> My Lord, this has been a long season of grief for us. Since December, I count 10 persons who have died in this congregation. 10 deaths is a lot of deaths. I've been here 10 years and I can't remember doing 10 funerals in that little of time in the past six months. We've had 10 deaths. First was Andrew Perry Jr. Followed by Van Say, Gwen Mann, Robert Bailey Jr., Mr. Farrington, Mrs. Lyles, Maria Flatter, Connie Jackson, and then lastly, Mr. Lawrence. And when you add Betty Williams, that's 10. Ten persons who were part of this congregation. Ten persons who I have served as pastor to. Okay, tell me who I miss. Like Uncle Willie. Well, I didn't count Uncle Willie because that was before that was twenty. 2022, but I'm just speaking of the last 10 months, all right? I didn't mean not to count them the same within the last 10 months. 10 persons who I visited in their homes, sat with them in hospitals. 10 persons that we have shared the Lord's table together with. Ten persons for whom, as pastor, I've given, I have been given the charge of their souls. And I don't take that lightly. Behind my silliness and my obsession with hockey, I really take my responsibility as pastor seriously. And I know that I'm accountable to God for every one of you. I love you. I care deeply for each of you. And what affects you affects me deeply. So I have grieved each death. But collectively, all of them have begun to weigh on me. However, beyond my responsibilities as pastor, these are your family members. Mm -hmm. Your husband, your wife, brother, sister. Persons that you loved. Persons that you've had relationships with, worship with. Some of you were saved you've been raised by these persons. Shared friendship, years of friendship, relationships. They go back longer than I can even imagine. And I realize that you are grieving too. I thought about this back in May. Thought about doing something to acknowledge our grief and what we were going through. I looked at the calendar for June and it was really very full. We had, you know, Children's Sunday, Men's Father's Day, Wall Time. So I decided that I would preach a sermon today on grief. And then over the last two weeks, we've had two more deaths. And that's when I realized that one sermon would not be enough. Several of you over the past couple of weeks have mentioned to me how you feel in this season. 
last Sunday after service, Sister Leora came to me and said, you've got to help us. I don't know if I said it to you, but I know I thought to myself, I'm barely helping myself. <laughs> Then I had a conversation, I've had conversations with some of you and you've expressed your grief. So today, I'm calling the church to a period of mourning. During this month of July, we will mourn those who we have lost. We will publicly acknowledge our grief for those who we loved and for those who we care for. And if, as I just did, you just need to take a moment and cry, then we're going to do that together. Collectively, as a congregation, we will share our grief together. While their deaths have been felt as through individual families, they're part of the Mount Olive family. Amen. Together, we will mourn each, every woman. We will comfort and console each other. Now, this period of mourning that I'm calling is not something that I just made up, all right? Clearly in scripture, there are processes for mourning. In our first scripture we read of in Deuteronomy, the death of Moses. And notice it said that there was a 30-day period where they mourned the death of Moses. And it was after that 30 days that Joshua then led the people into the promised land. If you go further, if you go into the first chapter of 2 Samuel, you will see that even in the midst of fighting the Malachites, David stopped to mourn the death of Saul and Jonathan. Throughout the Old Testament, you will find periods of mourning. But in our reading from the 11th chapter of John, we, we're very familiar with the story of Jesus late raising Lazarus from the dead. And we, we celebrate, we thank God for that miracle, but we, I believe we've missed what takes place in verse 31. If you look at it, it says that the Jews had come to Mary and Martha's house to console them. And if you go back up to verse 19, it speaks of the Jews who had come to console them. That even in Jesus' day, there were periods of mourning where people gathered to help console and to mourn with those who had lost loved ones. So it is appropriate for us to have the time of mourning. But also notice that we opened the service this morning with verses from Psalm 45. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. Why would I use this song? Well, even in the midst of our mourning and grief, God is still worthy to be praised. Amen. 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 Here, here, here's the complexity of times like this. We, we know that God is still God and worthy of praise, but at the same time, our hearts are broken. So we have to both praise God and more. Even in our sorrow and loss for those families, even in your tears, God is great and greatly to be praised 
God's greatness is unsearchable. Yes, yes. The Bible tells us that it is appropriate to mourn, so we are calling for a month of mourning. Mourning is remembrance. We remember their lives, the times that we shared with them, the fond memories we have, and their significance to us. <clears throat> Mourning is celebration. We celebrate their lives and the fact that their lives had meaning and purpose that touched us in a special way. Mourning is also grief. To shed tears. To acknowledge sadness and loss. To, to hug each other. Encourage each other and to help each other get through this. Then mourning is hope and renewal. Hope that out of the pain, the sorrow, the grief, the sense of loss that we feel, God will bring forth something new. This is where I'm trusting and relying on God. Each one of these persons were integral to who we are as a congregation. Each person made a significant contribution to who Mount Olive is. And without Mount Olive could never be the same. I'll say that again. Without them, Mount Olive will never be the same. Now this is where I'm arguing and fussing with God. Don't, don't mind me arguing with God. I do it all the time. And trust me, God is not bothered <laughs> by my argument. A void has been created in this church with the loss of these ten persons. And God has to do something about that. Without the love, guidance, Spirit that these persons contributed to us, what will Mount Olive become? Mm -hmm. Their presence is greatly missed, but how do we carry on? I don't know the answer to any of that, which is why I'm fussing with God. I need God to show me how do we move forward from here? I need God to show me what I need to do to help us to go forward. More importantly, more importantly, I need God to show me and to show us what we need to grow into. I'll say more about that in a moment. So, as you can see, I've changed a few things around. Ms. Evans, as president of the Deaconess Board, felt that she needed to be informed first before I tell anybody else what it is I'm doing. <laughs> Notice, well, you probably can't see because the Altar is draped for communion. But the two tables that used to be on the sides for the plants have been now moved to the center and they've been draped in black. There really isn't a way, there really hasn't a way to honor members who die. Now when one of the ministers, bishops, I know the pastor dies, we break the chair. Just before the pandemic, we 
had three deaconesses to die in. I honored them by draping those two tables. And if, Ms. Evans, if we had black pyramids, we would drape the altar for a funeral only. But we don't have those pyramids. So, so what I've done, and what you'll be able to see when we take, that, take this down, is that the tables have been moved to the center next to the communion table, and they're draped in black. And when you come in, you'll be able to see this. I want it to be front and center for us. I want you to be able to see this and to remind us that we are mourning. We will continue from communion today until communion next month. All right. In front of you, there is a bowl. I thought about how you can express your own grief, how you can express your own prayers. And after we reopened, I, I, I didn't go back to having bulletins part of the environmentalists in me said we didn't need to keep throwing away paper every week. But you don't have anything to write on today and you're not prepared, but that bowl will be there every week for you to write your own expressions of grief, for you to write your own prayers, for you to make your own expressions, and if you just place them in that bowl, we will pray on it over them every week. Right? Even after, even after I finish the day, and if you have something you want to write down, want something, you want prayer, you can, when you come for communion, you can place it in the bowl. It, it, it's there every week for us to make our own expressions. And we will pray over them each week. But finally, I'm asking you to pray with me. As I said, without those who we have lost, we can never be the same. So I'm asking God, who will we become? The most important question, as I said, is this. How much do we have to grow for where God is leading us? How much do we have to grow for where God is leading us. I said that mourning is both hope and renewal. Hope that out of the grief God will bring forth something new, but whatever that new is requires new people. May I remind you on this communion Sunday that Jesus said, you cannot put new wine in old wineskins. What new God will bring forth will require new people. So how much do we have to grow for where God is leading us? I'm trusting, relying on God that out of this season, God will bring forth something new. I do not know what that will be. But what I do know is that before God can bring forth something new, we have to grow into where God is leading us. Yes. So my prayer is this. Lord, I am your servant, called to do your will, 
cleanse me so that you can use me. Then open me to the movement of your spirit so that in your leading, you can make me and this church into what you would want us to be. We will, as we do when we have communion service, we will ask, we'll allow you the opportunity to come to the altar and pray, talk to God in your own way. And spend as much time here this morning as you need. And if you have tears that need to be shed, I've got plenty of tissue here. Mm -hmm. But take as much time as we need today to pray, to console with each other as we go through this period of mourning. Amen. Amen. Now, last, well, for the past couple of weeks, I asked that the youth, hold on, brother, brother Kosar, just hold on for a moment. I ask that the youth would delay um, the youth achievement announcements until this Sunday. And then I looked up and I didn't see Lydia mm -hmm. and, and didn't think about it again and didn't know that Dion was here to do, to do the announcements. But now Lydia is here, so whichever one of you are <laughs> come on and do the youth achievements and then we will serve you. Alex Newby Jr., a.k.a. AJ. He received a certificate in reading for showing growth, a Performer Arts Award for Arts Participation, and the Sportsmanship Award for Hard Work and Physical Education. Next is Alexis Newby finished the school year on the AB Honor Road. Zanaya Gibbs received a Performance Arts Award for Excellence in Art. Next, Michael Brodnick, who's actually here. She graduated from Kennedy Middle School. These are all the achievements I have for today. Again, we encourage all parents or youth to turn in anything they are doing in school, in the community, or just anything that they want to uplift. Thank you. Amen. Deaconess is prepared for community. Um, here's what I want you to do. I want you to just to uncover the altar rail, pull that up. And Reverend and I will take care of everything in the chance. And I need to say that Reverend McFarland is here with me this morning, not just because it's Communion Sunday, but I forgot about her actually. When we reopened, I, I said to both of the ministers, that I wouldn't, I asked them not to come to the pulpit because we wanted to try to maintain our social distancing and we weren't sure how this was going to work. And I told them I'd call them when I needed them. And then as we relaxed things, I forgot I told her that. <laughs> she was diligent and faithful. She didn't come unless I called her, but I forgot I told her not to come. Louise <laughs> Craig, she's here now, right? Um, 
and that was my fault. Um, she and I would take care of the, the, the table today, all right? You didn't say your email address. Oh, for those who are viewing online, if you are in need of prayer, you can contact me at my email address, which is pastor at monolithanbc.net. We will be happy to pray with you, to counsel with you, to be there for, for you for whatever it is that you need. You can contact me at my email address at every time. That is on the screen.